Velocicoaster is opened at Islands Adventure Universal Studios, Florida. Begging the question, when is Iron Gwazi over at Push Gardens Tampa going to open? I think a lot of people have probably forgotten about Iron Gwazi. It's kind of just sitting there as a lawn ornament. I think the only people that are really caring about it still are probably roller coaster enthusiasts or diehard RMC fans. I think Velocicoaster has kind of made people in Florida kind of forget about it just because the high marks of Velocicoaster and the high amount of theming and just the overall ride experience has many people even wondering if Iron Gwazi is even going to be the top coaster in Florida when it opens. But on today's video, I want to talk about some theories on why Iron Gwazi hasn't opened in other SeaWorld Entertainment coasters. But before we begin with this video, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and then also the like button. The like button helps more viewers be able to watch this video. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. So we appreciate if you would like this video. And as always, please be sure if you can to share this video or recommend this video to your friends. Let's go ahead and begin. So Iron Gwazi was supposed to open in 2020. As the steepest coaster in America and the steepest RMC. I guess it was the steepest RMC in America. But anyways, the coaster was supposed to open in 2020. It was ready to go. And then the pandemic happened. And then it was delayed. And then it kind of sat there. And then everything opened back up at Busch Gardens Tampa. And they still didn't feel like opening up Iron Gwazi, obviously, to, due to crowd levels. And then the crowds actually returned. And then we heard spring 2021 and then that was changed to just 2021 and now it's just sitting there and then in a recent video that was released by texas thrill seekers on facebook we saw that the ceo of SeaWorld entertainment basically was stating that there were structural issues with iron Gwazi causing delays in it but he didn't hint at it was going to open later this year or any of the other coasters were going to open later this year because we you know we have emperor just sitting there over at SeaWorld San Diego. We have Pantheon just sitting there over at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. And we have Icebreaker that's just sitting there at SeaWorld Orlando. So I think there's more than what they're saying is going on. And then there's a couple of theories. Have they paid their bills to these four manufacturers? Obviously, we knew that there was liens filed against them with B&M, with Intamin, with RMC and Premier Rides. And then, you know, we didn't see any more of that. So we imagine that the bills were all caught up with that. And we think that all the coasters have been turned over to the parks and that payments are on time now. And that begs the question, like, well, what the heck is going on with this? We know we saw Jersey Devil already open over at Six Flags Great Adventure. We saw Stunt Pilot already open up over at Silverwood. And somehow, I know they're single rails, but somehow they opened up before Iron Gwazi. There's a theory going around that because crowd levels are where they're at and the parks are completely full, that SeaWorld basically doesn't care about the new coasters right now. They're making their money. Why spend the extra money on hiring new ride operators and running a new coaster when we could just open new food places and charge people more money for food and make money off of that because it's a higher profit margin than roller coasters. Basically, roller coasters bring in people to the parks, but their main profit is obviously food and merchandise that's the main two that parks make money off of so if they could still keep people coming into the parks without a new coaster opening they save money on not only on running the ride but also operating the coaster so that's one theory the other theory obviously was that the rides aren't paid in full and those are the only two theories i could think of if you could think of any uh please comment in the description below and by me saying that it's hurting SeaWorld's image, what I mean is that they're not being transparent, so a lot of people think that they're withholding stuff from them. But I also think if you open up these new coasters, I think it would eat up a lot of the capacity because a couple of them are capacity monsters, which would lower the lines with other coasters. Also, it creates a lot of excitement. It also creates people wanting to return to the parks. I think once the summer ends, you're going to see a lot of the crowds kind of dwindle and you're going to kind of find out really the uh, situation with SeaWorld. With Velocicoaster opening over at Universal Islands of Adventure, it created a lot of fandom. And actually, Universal has sold a lot of annual passes just so people could come and ride Velocicoaster over and over again. And I think Universal's actually done the best out of all the Florida parks in terms of keeping the guests pleased. Uh, SeaWorld Entertainment, in my opinion, with the operations and the amount of rides that have been closed and 
just the operations in general have not been where they need to be at. And I've experienced this at Busch Gardens Tampa. I've also experienced this over at SeaWorld Orlando. I'm not too familiar with Busch Gardens Williamsburg, but I have had some friends that have complained about the operations over there as well. SeaWorld San Diego, I, I am not certain at all on that uh, either, but I do know, like I said, with California allowing everything to open back up, I think Emperor would be a great thing to open up. It's a small compact B&M dive coaster and it would allow them to bring the people into SeaWorld San Diego because right now, I mean, you have a couple of coasters in their lineup, but nothing too exciting. I think ever adds that extra bit of excitement. And then over in Busch Gardens Williamsburg, Pantheon to me reminds me a lot of a Lost Coaster. You have the top hat element and then you kind of have the spike, which is kind of reminiscent of the Hagrid's motor bike adventure over at Islands Adventure as well. So I think it's going to have two elements in it from two of the rides over Islands of Adventure. And I think it's going to be a great addition. I think in the Northeast, you have a lot of people traveling to go ride Pantheon. So I think they're missing the mark on that over there. But like I was stating, you know, they have the food places open. So, you know, they're okay about that. Like I said before, though, new rides and attractions attract more visitors into the park to spend more money in the food places and on merchandise. So I feel like something more is going on that they're not telling us about. I don't believe SeaWorld's in like the type of financial restraint that some people think they are. I think this is just like an operation standpoint. Like, let's go ahead and wait and see. As soon as the crowds start dying down, that's when we'll open our coasters. Or maybe when the momentum of Velocicoaster kind of dwindles down in the fall, then we will open our coasters. But I'm not 100% sure on that. And I can't, like, derive a definite answer on that. Let me know, like I said, in the comments below what you think is causing the delay. And if you're even still excited about Iron Glazy or Pantheon or Emperor or Icebreaker, if you're not, I understand why you're not, because, you know, we don't even know when it's going to open. We don't even know what's fully going on with it. So I understand why some people are frustrated, upset with SeaWorld and why they've decided to cancel their passes or not go to the parks. But I do feel like when they all do open up, it's going to create huge phantom. And I think people will return and be fine with everything. Do I think Iron Glazy will be the best coaster in Florida? Well, time will tell. I do believe that out of all four, I think Pantheon will be the best, and there's reasons behind that. So, thanks again for watching the video. I hope this answers some questions. If it didn't answer a lot of questions, I understand. And as always, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and watch for future videos that'll drop down for Midwest Coaster fans. And this is Chris signing off until next time. Thanks again for watching.